Hello, my name is Elizabeth Bowman, and I work for the Learning and Teaching Consultants in LSA Technology Services. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about rubrics today in Canvas. Um, rubrics can be used in a number of ways. I'm going to focus on two different ways. One is communicating and grading students, and the other way is to use Canvas outcomes. So rubrics in Canvas can be used for graded assignments um, and quizzes, quizzes and discussions. Um, and it allows the instructor to grade work in SpeedGrader uh, as the rubric is attached to the assignment. Well, let me show you an example of what that looks like. So here we have an astronomy class, and um, we're going to take a look at one particular assignment in here. It's a homework assignment. And when we click on this homework assignment, what we'll see is, this is homework two. Um, this is the general assignment. Um, there's quite a bit of math involved here. So the instructor has created this assignment with an uploadable um, option. So they've gone ahead and added the option the student can upload an assignment to this, um, to this homework and have it graded through SpeedGrader. So I'm going to show you the attached rubric first in SpeedGrader. This is the workflow. Um, so the student has uploaded their assignment here in SpeedGrader, and here is the answer. So I'm going to go ahead and view this rubric. So if I click view the rubric, it's kind of funny. The interface is a little bit cut off, but you can actually, in SpeedGrader, widen this out a little bit. So we can actually see the rubric here. So the rubric is next to the assignment, and I can go ahead and see if the student has performed the particular assignment criteria and the grade automatically populates here. When I'm done, I can go ahead and save. So what this rubric allowed me to do was go ahead and, and communicate to the student, of course, how well they did, but also in the left-hand margin here where it says criteria, it, it tells the student in very great detail exactly what it is that the instructor expected for this particular assignment. And this is one of the most valuable portions of the rubric. Now we're going to take a look at how to create your own rubric. Over here in the left hand side of Canvas, you'll see the option for rubrics. We'll go ahead and click on that. So here's the existing rubrics that were already in the course. We're going to add a new one. We're going to add one for homework six. So it always comes up some rubric. Um, that's the default name. Um, if you don't change it, you'll have some rubric in here. And this is a really important thing to remember when you're creating rubrics, you want to make sure you name them appropriately. There's no way to search rubrics inside of Canvas. Um, they uh, appear in alpha uh, numeric order. Um, and you want to make sure that you know uh, exactly what each rubric is for. And so you have to be diligent, give it appropriate title. So I'd like to have three uh, instead of two. We have two ratings here right now. So here's where you put the criterion. Um, these are the ratings, and these are how many points that particular criterion is worth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit this plus sign right here to add three options. Um, this is going to be my partial completion, so I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, partial completion. So this particular criterion is that the student has um, completed the assignment. So I'm giving them credit just for doing the work. Um, this isn't the best way to uh, rate or assess students' work, but it does motivate them to know that if they submit something, they actually get some points for that. Um, so for partial complete completion, they get three points. For full marks or uh, full completion, they get five points and zero for none. So I'm going to go ahead and click the pencil here. I'm going to change this from full marks to complete. And then I'm going to click the pencil over here under zero points. Did not submit. And so they get three points for partial completion, zero for not turning in anything, and five points for um, completing. So I'm going to go ahead and give this criteria some more uh, description. The default is obviously description of criterion. Completed assignment. 
So you can put longer information in here and then long description that sort of gives some more detail. This is really important when you're using uh, different sorts of, of um, assessment. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Rubric. And once I do that, the rubric is available for me to choose to attach to an assignment or homework project. So in the previous demonstration, we created homework six as our rubric for our homework assignment. Now I'm going to show you how to attach this rubric to an existing assignment. Right now we're looking at course rubrics, and now we're going to go to assignments. And we'll scroll down here to homework six. Here's a description of home, homework six. It's got a couple PDFs associated with it, and it's a file upload assignment or 10 points. So down here at the bottom, I don't even have to click edit. I can just click plus rubric. So something interesting happens here. Um, you actually get the, the blank rubric template. Um, and there's a number of options that you can pick here. Um, we're, we're actually not going to use this in this demonstration, but at any time as you're uh, creating assignments in Canvas, you can hit the plus rubric and create rubrics from this dashboard. You don't necessarily have to go to rubrics on the left hand side. You can actually access uh, the rubric building tool um, right from the assignment itself. And there's a number of options here that you can uh, choose. You can remove the points if you don't want to use it for grading. Uh, write freeform comments. You don't necessarily have to use outcomes. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, you can use this rubric for assignment grading. Or you can hide the score. If you're just using this for assessment results for your entire department and it's not necessarily associated with this particular assignment. But there's a number of options you have here. I'm not going to use this rubric template for this particular example. I'm actually going to click over here where it says find a rubric. I've already created a rubric for this assignment. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick it. Now here's the part where it's important that you named it appropriately because as you can see, there's a bunch of options here. I'm going to go ahead and click on um, astronomy test rubric. So if I had rubrics for other classes, they would also show up in this particular uh, view. And I'm going to scroll down to homework six. HW6, which is the one we just created, and I'm going to click Use This Rubric. And now it's attached to the assignment, and I can use this for grading or assessing a student's performance on a particular assignment, Homework 6. So now we're going to take a look at a couple different kinds of rubrics. Um, first of all, why would you use a rubric in the first place? Well, one of the main reasons to use a rubric is for faster grading. Um, it allows you to make sure you're focusing as you're grading um, on particular aspects of the student's work um, that you've requested. Um, you don't necessarily want to make your rubrics task specific, although most folks, when they first create a rubric, that's the first thing they do because it makes the most sense to them. Um, you don't want to be too general. Um, you want to avoid some dysfunctional details and, and focus on a couple different dimensions. So the example we have here is the online discussion forum grading rubric with the faculty member has written some personal requests as to what they would like the students to do in their discussions. And managing discussions can be pretty challenging, you know, under any circumstances. So it's helpful if you can give students some framework around which they can do their assignment. So what we have here are rating levels or descriptors. And if you choose these carefully, the students should uh, pretty much know what, it, what the student, what the faculty member requests. So here we have, we have five descriptors, promptness, delivery of post, the relevance of the post, expression within the post, and contribution to the learning community. Now, all of these could, could be considered pretty vague. So if we look down here at the bottom, we have the descriptions measured out in the online discussion rubric. So here, student gets zero points if they don't respond under promptness and initiative. If they respond to most postings within several, several days, they have a point one. If they respond to most post, postings within 24 hours, two, and consistently responds is a three. 
So here we are sort of using um, a task specific rubric, uh, but we sometimes have to do this just because we need students to get an idea of when something happens. In discussions in particular, it's important um, that time does not uh, go on too long before they respond because it loses the urgency for the particular discussion. Now that we've taken a look at how to create a rubric and attach it to assignment, we're going to take a look at outcomes. Well, outcomes is another portion of Canvas that actually uses rubrics to track particular uh, elements of a student's performance. Outcomes enables administrators and faculty to track students' progress as measured by pedagogical goals or desired outcomes. Assessments created to test student knowledge or to require students to demonstrate a specific skill resulting from a learning activity can be aligned to learning outcomes by using rubrics and outcomes together. Creating student work automatically collects and compiles data on student progress for the outcomes. The data is available for reporting to support student and teaching improvement, identify at-risk students, and support the accreditation project process. This streamlined approach dramatically reduces the amount of work required to implement learning outcomes through an intelligent reuse of assessment workflows in the grading process. So that's a fancy way of saying this helps folks track the performance of their particular uh, um, curriculum goals. So we're going to take a look and see what this looks like. So here's the astronomy and astrophysics curriculum map. So most faculty members would probably never see something like this um, unless you were on a curriculum committee or um, you were an administrator. And essentially what this shows is the number of different courses throughout the student's career as a, an astronomy major um, when they would achieve particular out learning outcomes. So this is what the portion of Canvas that Outcomes refers to is all about. It's not necessarily about individual grades or individual assignments. It's about performance over the long term, over the entire uh, student experience. So already we have a number of outcomes set up inside of this particular course. Um, most of these outcomes are, are pretty simple. Um, but we have one here called math. Um, and here's this particular outcome looks pretty much like a rubric. Um, however, it, it doesn't necessarily involve any grading for the student. Um, and sometimes the students might not even see this particular outcome being tracked in the background of the course. So let's take a deeper dive and take a look at a little bit more information about outcomes. So here's a list of, of the learning outcomes for astronomy majors. Um, there's quite a few of them here, um, and the curriculum committee has spent a lot of time putting this together. So these can be used for grading in some situations, but for the most part, uh, when you're using outcomes, what you're trying to do is focus the student's attention on the most important skills and activities in your course. You want to align your quizzes and assignments to different kinds of mastery. You can also run reports on the account level about the student's learning mastery for an entire group of students or an entire semester. You can assess student progress using different calculation methods, and you can track student project on a particular learning outcome or overall in the learning mastery gradebook. This really helps faculty and whole programs uh, focus their uh, assignments and what they're asking students to do, and making sure that these things actually build the skills that the students are expected to know. So it's important to keep these in mind when you're designing your assignments for your particular course. As, as the students progress through the program, are they achieving these particular goals?